we had someone ask questions. We have questions that are popping up on the screen in front of us, and it says, how do you hunt without damaging a reef? So we're gonna incorporate a, a, a video in showing the proper way to spare a lionfish and not damage a coral reef. And we're gonna maybe show like a damaged coral reef compared to uh, mm. a, a good reef. And mm. what happens is um, to lionfish hunt, um, you, can, you can hunt lionfish from a boat, you can hunt lionfish from shore. So the shore divers, there's boat divers. Most likely it's easier to hunt from a boat because they can get dropped off on a reef and drop down and you have Drift more time. Dive or it's it's yeah. not as much work. Um, yeah, and also depending on whether you're hunting uh, during the day or at night. I mean, because that again, that goes back to being very uh, familiar with your equipment, being a comfortable diver, because if you're inverted at, in a, you know, maybe in a deep, and also a dark dive and a night dive, and you know, you can get. But we don't. We don't recommend uh, people that never dove for lionfish before to to lionfish hunt at night at yeah. all. Definitely not. That's for advanced, More advanced diver that's got a lot of experience <clears throat> and. Well, and that's why there's no real certifications. But as you hunt and as you become better, then you can incorporate, you know, more uh, advanced type dives and hunting. So the more you dive, the more you comfortably feel and. Uh, you've learned different skills is really important before you. Being aware of your surroundings, uh, where other divers are also. If you're gonna you be shooting shoot a spear, anybody, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's a lot um, of safety. What equipment do people have to have in order to properly lionfish hunt? So Raphael mentioned the zookeeper. The zookeeper sounds kind of funny. We're gonna show one in a minute, but right now what we're gonna do is um, people need to have a um, pole spear. So what happens is, this is a pole spear. This is a lionator, and it's uh, 29 inches long. It's one of my favorite spears. Um, you have to learn how to just pull back with this. So you grab here, and you come down. Oh, we're not on the water, so I don't want to hit Raphael. Mm -hmm. But you hold them like this, and we let go. And uh, you let go at one time, and then it goes into the fish. You get as close to the fish as possible. We try to go for a head shot, and again, we're not shooting down into the coral, we're shooting towards the head. Um, sometimes we get stuff in open water where it's floating and not even touching the coral at all. If I have a lionfish in front of me and the coral's there, I'll wait until it moves. I, I will not really take a shot because I don't want to take a chance of damaging any, any coral. Um, this is a, uh, a little rusty, but this is a, a tip that goes on the lionator. And this is a little bit longer, this, the shorter ones also. But there's a three prong, and I put a um, hair wrap around it to just keep the prongs a little closer. But anyway, you go like this, and you put the lineator together, and it just screws in. And then as soon as you have the, the point on, you tighten it up, you're ready to hunt. So again, you're gonna just pull back. I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to hurt anybody. Right. But you pull back, you bring this hand down to here, but you can hold this hand and pull down. And then you aim, and tsh you let go, and that's how you get your lionfish. So this is a lionator. So, um, and no matter what spear you have, these surgical tubes is what basically all it is, or rubber tubing that stretches out. They're prone to go bad. So keeping extras um, is a very good idea because chances are uh, it's gonna snap at one point or, uh, or another, probably right when you have the biggest fish in front of you. And some people even put double, double straps, double, yeah. and so that is an immediate power. backup. Yeah, and you don't have to wait till you go back to the you know boat or to your house or wherever you have the spares. Or they use to both put it at the same together. time as a stronger. Yeah, if you have a really very strong yeah. big old fish, um, like you were saying, very shooting hard in the, heads. Yeah. The the headshot sometimes will bounce off or yeah. not go all the way through, to, yeah. and it just depends on how sharp your tips are. Keeping like, again, keeping your equipment ready. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to grind those points or file them in. And try not to hit uh, coral or any kind of rocks at all because... Right. And this is a weapon. I mean, no different than, you know, uh, any other type of knife, gun, anything. So don't point it at anything unless you're going to... And be, be aware who's around you. Don't, don't be like... I mean, if you're, if you're on the surface kicking out and you have this in your hand versus secured in a zookeeper, um, you know, locked in or something, then... You know, you got to be aware of where these tips are. Some people will actually put little covers on these. Oh, I and usually take them pull off. my spear like this when I'm jumping in the water, just yeah. and to make sure I don't stab myself. Correct. Or but your BC or somebody I, I else. I just keep BC. it away from other people. 
I mean, I've seen people where accidents happen. They actually accidentally poke their BC, and now you have to get a whole other piece of equipment. You know, and that ruins your day and probably maybe a week. Who knows, depending on what you have available to you. Okay, and Raphael's got another type of sphere. You can explain that. Yeah. What brand is that? Okay. This is a JBL sphere. JBL it's sphere. a little different in that it's tapered. It's almost like a Q-stick. And, um, you know, again, this surgical tubing is a little different color, but same prim uh, principle. It's just kept in tight inside of here. There's, uh, if you unthread this, it's got like one side that has a little... Uh, spherical uh, piece of... Uh, so do you made that yourself? No, I, I purchased this uh, through... No, but the uh, top? No, I, I got this uh, you here. You put it together? Yeah. yeah so some people make their own equipment. Yeah, um, I mean... This is the tip that comes with the uh, line air. Um, it's three prong. Yeah, there's three, there's four prongs. Um, some actually have a prong in the center and three around or four around. Uh -huh. It just, you know, depends on the diver's preference. And then a little tip. When it, sometimes the prongs start opening up a lot. Yeah. So I learned uh, from my friend uh, Walt Delman, who sells these, and also Abigail, who's in Aruba. He's put this on here, and you can actually make the uh, tips a little bit closer together. Mm -hmm. Definitely more. It holds it together. And, and not just holds it together, but if you're hunting or shooting at a smaller, smaller fish, fish, you want to have your prongs closer. You're going to hit. Because you have like a better chance. Otherwise, you have to aim like one point at the, right. at the small fish. And so three is definitely better than one. Um, this is another type. I used this in um, the Grand mm -hmm. Caymans when I was there. And what happened is, before you go to a country and you start bringing spears, you have to find out what the laws are and what the rules are. And I can tell you that in the Grand Caymans, I know personally, because I've been to 10 different uh, countries hunting lionfish, including Cuba, St. Croix, Panama, um, Grand Caymans, and what happens is in the Grand Caymans, this is the spear that they use. And what happens is, if you're a civilian, it's a one foot, sorry, two foot spear. It's one mm -hmm. foot. Two. two foot. And then the instructor's allowed to use an extra foot. So what happens is, before you lionfish hunt in the Grand Caymans, you have to take a course. So when I went there, I took a course with dive tech, and I spent uh, you know, a couple hours learning about how to use the pole spear, not to shoot the coral, what to do, uh, you know, use how to use the spear correctly. And um, my instructor Kim was great, and without her, I couldn't hunt lionfish the rest of the trip. But after I was done with that course, um, they actually it's it's a licensing course. Yeah. Um, so this is considered a weapon in uh, Bonaire they don't even allow you to use pole spears because they don't want anybody shooting uh, grouper or any other kind of fish, uh, power fish, stuff like that. And um, I was diving today and I, I was like right next to so many different types of fish, it would be easy for me to, to spear them. And they don't want people hunting the other type of fish. Right. They want you to hunt lionfish and that's it. There's laws, you have to stick to the laws. So yeah. this is again, a different type of spear. Um, Raphael keeps on bringing up um, he's telling us about how he uses a zookeeper. What is a zookeeper? Nobody knows what a zookeeper is. <laughs> what do you do with a lionfish? You have a lionfish on your pole spear, and the thing is, you need to get rid of it because you don't want to safely <laughs> keep it away from everybody else because you don't want to poke get, somebody. You know, uh, poke because there's venom, not poison, yeah. in the, a lionfish, and also the barbs are sharp. And so Raphael's going to take out zookeeper. This is one of my favorite products, zookeeper. I've been using uh, for the last 10, uh, 11 years now, and um, they're, they're made in Florida, yep. and they have, uh, I have an extendable that I brought on my trip, fits in my suitcase. Um, and that's and exactly what this one here is. Oh, it does? Yeah. Oh, wow. So this is a name brand, Zookeeper. They were the, one of the first ones to actually create something portable, and they come in different sizes. To keep the, to keep the lionfish in yeah. safely so you don't get stomped. So this one particular, I mean, I always recommend also putting hard contact uh, keepers on it because the plastic ones will probably break, uh, as you can see in this one here. Oh, wow. Yep. So this one you can clip to your BC easily. And as you get in the water, you can open this out, and now you can fill this with as many fish as it uh, okay, will safely so, hold. So, so the, depending on the size of the fish. The zookeeper, uh, we're just going to take this off quick. Sure. The top's here, and then what happens is a little funnel, and it's yeah. cut. So the fish go in. I'm not going to stab. No. They go in this way, 
into the tube, push them through. Through. When you pull back, the fish get caught on the, the, the tips, and they, it stays in here. So lionfish, zookeeper, safari. This is all you know. Hunting. Hunting. <laughs> yes. So if you look inside, the fish are in there. They swim around. Some of them live if you don't kill them in a headshot. When you're putting this together, you have to screw it on this way. After you get your fish, if we're gonna we're gonna show in uh, real life how you dump out a zookeeper, but for right now, Raphael, I'll show how you would dump your fish out. I would have a uh, cooler um, somewhere safe that's not gonna move around, or maybe on the edge of the uh, maybe of the boat, or maybe on the edge of shore, depending on where yeah, you are, on the back of a pickup truck. Uh, if it's not your boat, definitely ask. Maybe like a table or something yeah. like that, because I've yeah. been on boats. I was in a boat with my friend uh, Alton mm -hmm. in Jamaica. He dumped the fish on the floor, and unfortunately, 10 minutes later, he's walking around after we put the fish away on ice, and there was a broken spine on the floor, yeah, and he had bare feet, and he was in pain you know, for a day after that. So I right. definitely don't recommend dumping the lionfish on the bottom of a boat yeah. floor, because it's yeah, dangerous. be really careful, yeah. It's yeah, best into the, into the uh, cooler, um, or okay. like I said, if you're on the back, you know, you're back on shore, you did a shore dive, and you open up the tailgate of your boat, of your truck, you know, you can dump them on there. You have pretty good control of uh, where their fish are going, and it's pretty easy. Put that back. Yeah. Okay. Also, make sure, like anything else, that this is put on securely, site, yeah. because there are some that have either a top or a bottom, and if they're not on tight, and you're hunting and you're in the pops ocean, off and then the fish are floating out. Yeah. So, or you lose the top altogether. The fish is on a spear here. Mm -hmm. We take it in like this. Pull, pull out. Safe. Your hands are not getting stuck. Oh, another thing I learned because I did get stung in Panama, is that um, my, uh, my zookeeper has a handle on top here. Mm -hmm. So I hold it by the handle here, so my hand's not over here. Push it in. Um, I was in Panama, I had a dive master that was scared, and it was surged, it was going up and down, and what happened is he was up above me like this, and you hold it, hold this here? Yep. So he's, he was holding the zookeeper like that, and I'm down below going to put the fish in, and he kept on going up and down away from me. So what I did is, I, I, which I saw on video, is I was holding the zookeeper like this, and the spines were up like this. As I was putting the fish in, he moved, oh. and it got me in this finger. My finger had a lionfish thing. My first one, Panama, 2015 in May. I will never forget it. My finger was swollen, out like this blister for a month. Um, I couldn't feel my finger. It swelled from here down to my wrist. Um, I did not have a Stingmaster kit, which uh, is sold uh, by, uh, I think, Lionfish University. Mm -hmm. And I did not have any hot water, which breaks down the, uh, the venom. venom. And what happened is I didn't get hot water until about an hour later. If I had a knife, I would have cut my finger off because it was so painful. Wow. It's like the most painful thing I think that ever happened in my whole life. I had my appendix out in 2009. <laughs> that was better, being sick for a day with appendicitis. Than getting stung by a lionfish, yeah. so you don't want to get stung by a lionfish. And unfortunately, um, put this away. You had a busy week. I had a busy week. Um, I was diving last Sunday in Aruba, and unfortunately, um, one of my friends at the end of the dive saw two lionfish, and they were up and under a um, piece of coral. And I went down, turned upside down, and I had my zookeeper, and it was this way. Uh, let me take that. So I had it so upside down like this. So what happened is when I turned around after I, I, I actually didn't shoot the fish because my ear was running low, safety before playing around with fish, someone else got the fish, you know, themselves, so it's, we still got them. Um, when I turned, my finger went into the zookeeper and unfortunately there was one spine because the fish came this way that was sticking out of the funnel and that got me in the finger. That was not fun, but um, I, I found something new. I didn't have hot water right away, so I said better than nothing, I had ice in my cooler for the uh, lionfish. I ended up putting the ice on my finger, kept the swelling down. When I got back to land, I put hot water on my finger, I soaked it, and I kept on going back and forth with the ice. Um, I know that most of the uh, uh, people that report on uh, lionfish injuries, uh, I don't know too many people that use the ice, but it worked for me, 
and it definitely helped again with the swelling and the pain yeah. but the hot water breaks definitely down. breaks down the, the protein in the venom that's what i carry my hot water in it's a nice big i'm not going to run out of hot water for a while thermos big thermos here yeah and, so um, hey carry a container that you can actually pour it into because oftentimes on boats or uh, if you're going out to the site you got to be self-sufficient so carry everything you may need and uh, maybe you're just going to be providing care to somebody else um, okay, but um, also we have, uh, <clears throat> I, I don't have with it right now, it's um, a, a little pack, it's plastic. You break it, like when they have a, a ice, the same thing, you, you snap well, it. This is a hot pack, basically. So I have a hot pack, and that, that helps so much. A lot too. of people get those at their, you know, sporting goods stores. Uh, you know, stick them in your gloves, your boots if, in the winter time, but anything like that is going to help because a boat ride back is probably, like you said, going to be an hour. Right, and then what happens is... Um, I did have one of the hot packs I think I bought through uh, Zookeeper and last year I was diving with someone else that got stung, I gave it to him and I forgot that it wasn't in my, my dive bag, mm, yep. so unfortunately, like I said, I used ice temporarily, which always check your gear, worked well. have a checklist, and uh, I got stung here, uh, that was last week on Sunday, and then unfortunately um, we went out again on uh, a couple days later and we got like a 17 and a half inch lionfish which was really big. I had him in my cooler, I was talking, I tipped the cooler over and one of the spines went through the side and caught my finger on the way into the sink. Mm -hmm. So that, that was terrible but then again while I was waiting for the hot water on the stove I ended up uh, putting ice on it so I had like relief right away, keep the swelling down and then I for six hours in a row I had my finger in uh, the hot water so I think I might have a call from uh, World Book of Guinness because I have two stings in eight days. And before that, it was uh, since 2015, so it's like seven years without it. I just had uh, seven year bad luck, I guess. So. so, anyway, I have to say that too, after being stung for the second and third time, um, this one went away the same day it was feeling fine. Yeah, and it's all next gonna one was like about you know, a day. Yeah, it's all going to so. depend also. Everybody's a little different. The way the, the age of the uh, Lionfish is going to make a difference. Oh. Also, how deep it penetrates and where. I yeah. mean, if you were close to your face or if you're close to yeah, you a sensitive area. Yeah, you face, yeah. yeah um, it's kind of hot, hard to put your hot, uh, face in hot water, so you don't want to do that. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, like we were saying, uh, safety. I mean, a lot of these accidents are preventable. A lot of the stings are preventable. They're usually because we as the hunters are doing something we probably shouldn't do or pay a little more attention while we're doing it. Uh, I've only been stung once, thankfully, and mine also is a smaller fish. What and happened when you were stung? I had a small knife, and I was going to do the humane thing and kill him because he, he didn't die after I speared him. And I went to uh, cut him right between the uh, eyes there, but he was small. And as soon as I pushed in, got poked. And, yeah. you know, I knew better. That was my own fault. But, um, yeah, the pain uh, subsides eventually. But, yeah, there's still the remnants, and you can still feel, um, you know, sensations that are a little different okay. and we, we talked about zookeeper being one of the uh you know primary uh or one of the original uh manufacturers of zookeepers and like i said you can that's make the next your thing own. i was gonna bring up yeah raphael made his this own this is a little that's bigger amazing. yeah this one's a little heavy duty i mean if you're doing a lot of shore entry you're banging into rocks and coal, you know not coral of course but you're banging going in from the shore um you know this was one of my first attempts at creating one and you know keep something to keep this safely in there and there you go when you're walking when you're doing shore dives like i said this is going to be hanging off your uh, bcd and these are secure what nobody's going to get poked it's your buoyancy compensator so whether you have a back inflate whether that's you have that's the best yeah basically okay. um so hopefully you learned that when you got open water certified before learning to hunt okay. but uh like I said, this has been through a lot. Um, salt water does uh, a lot of damage to pretty much anything metal. So regularly, steel, steel, yeah, steel. yeah, it's gonna corrode. So you have to check your gear regularly. Um, these are just regular bungees, and of course these will corrode and break as well. So, but uh, what I like about this, and uh, everybody does something that they're you know more comfortable with, or they design, improve their designs as they you know continue doing these, and. Um, but like I said, this is safe. They're contained. No one's going to get poked. They're, while you're searching, uh, they're in here. And then you can just pull it out when you're going to actually uh, spear a fish. Okay, so um, 
we're talking about getting stung. So between Raphael and myself, we have three stings and four stings. Uh, uh, Raphael's one, so that's yeah. four total. I'm not proud of it. Um, you know, one was in the kitchen, uh, two are underwater, and it's super important to make sure that you always know where your lionfish are. And sometimes people are taking pictures of lionfish, which is very exciting. And you kind of put their finger in the mouth, your, your thumb, mm -hmm, to hold get a grip on it to hold it out. And what happens is sometimes the fish are alive and they jump. People drop it, they drop it on a friend's foot. Um, I, I've been in uh, Pensacola, Florida hunting. We had a whole cooler fish. We had a couple of fish that were like about 17, close to 18 inches. Mm -hmm. As I was taking pictures of the cooler video, the fish jumped up in the air and just missed one of my friends. But the good news is that, you know, I have in my bag, which I haven't been using because like I said, I think I got too experienced, which is really no, no, no such thing, is I have um, gloves that are needleproof. And probably, you know, when I'm cleaning the fish and stuff, I should be using them because, oh, I have scissors too that you can cut the spines off with. Yeah, some people do that. Did that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but the, um, when I'm, I've been playing now, I've just been flaying the meat off mm -hmm. and just going around the spines and trying to be careful, hold the head, yeah. and then I take the skin off after that. Yes. But the, the gloves, I don't like wearing gloves because I can't feel when I'm yeah. holding my spear, it kind of slips out of my mm -hmm. hand. So, I mean, technically, I guess I could keep the left hand with a glove. And because I've seen people on the board too, the fish is not speared right. So with their glove, they'll grab the fish head and then poke, take their spear out and poke yeah. it in. Right. With the, a hand, I've seen people in Jamaica, um, take their hand, put it in their mouth, underwater, pull their spear out, and then stab it in the head, which is not that safe. So, you know, maybe one day if you're really super experienced, then it's okay to do. But um, safety is really super important. And again, if you get excited, um, you know, I was down 90 feet one time, also in Jamaica, and there was a big group of people, and all of a sudden I get ready to shoot, and I'm going this way so I don't hit the coral, and some lady goes swimming right in front of me. So you don't want to spear any other divers. Mm -hmm. Actually on the same trip, there was like 25 people on a boat. It was a 45 foot boat. I had someone else that was decided to go behind the line fish I was gonna shoot and get a really good picture of me shooting it. He had his camera on the other side of a, a little camera that I was going into, it was open. And I stopped before I shot because I'm like, yeah. the guy's camera is right there, I would have broken his camera. So, sure. I'm sure he would have gotten a great shot, but I don't think his camera would have been uh, doing too well with it leaking. Right. Um, and you mentioned the scissors. I mean, a lot of divers carry scissors. Um, some people cut those spines off in the water. Um, put it in their BCD. And, and yeah, a lot of work. Yeah, I, I don't do that myself, and I don't even cut them off anymore when I fillet them out. I just kind of go around and, and, and yeah, just play. do it that way. But, um, you know, again, that's based on your level of exposure experience. The gloves you were mentioning, uh, I believe you can get those even at law enforcement. Uh, Cop shops, you know, because they're they use them a lot for hospitals or hospital uh, yeah. suppliers and stuff yeah. because of uh, not being poked while they're really doing searches and stuff. So having the Kevlar type That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevlar. So, mm -hmm. um, I was in Cuba actually with a dive master who used a spear gun. I've never really seen wow. anybody ever use a spear gun on lionfish. Um, we were down in the water for an hour before it got dark. This guy would take a spear gun and be like, you know, five feet away and peg the lionfish between the head. I don't know how he did it, but he got 12 in an hour. And the reason that we only got 12 an hour, there was a ton of them in Cuba, a ton of lionfish, mm -hmm. but he take out his knife, cut up all the spines, all around the whole fish, and put it in his BCD. They didn't have a zookeeper. Um, I didn't have room in my luggage to bring one. Um, I didn't even know if I was gonna be able to, to hunt there. Um, the guy bought our tanks on a motorcycle which was really interesting. So, yeah. um, but he got you know twelve an hour, and yeah. they they eat them. They're very good eating. So. Cool.